back up. We were uh, doing the week four recap. I think I'll just have this go on YouTube. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to go on my Twitch. Sometimes I have technical difficulties, but that doesn't matter. You need to go to my Twitch stream anyway. So um, we did the picks today. We're, we're talking about my week four picks and recapping. We talked about the Cowboys and the Giants already. We, uh, we said how the Cowboys run offense and run defense is atrocious, but it didn't matter in this one because, you know, we got Dak Prescott um, and C.D. Lamb, who are on a connection again. They're, they're cooking again, and they're going to be just fine. And I felt like they picked up where they left off from the week prior in, in, in the fourth quarter versus the Ravens, and it showed in this one. Uh, and then next we had talked about the Saints and the Falcons, um, how the Saints' offense and Clint Kubiak's Offense is finally being exposed. I, I, he went on, you know, that Lynn Sanity run where he was awesome in the first couple weeks, but was, it, it was just, I felt like very carried by the wide zone. And once the team was competing with it, it was, they had to pass more, right? And Derek Carr's being asked more, and, and he can't really hit more out of structure, and he, he can't really hit stuff without the play action hitting for him. Um, and the Falcons, who I felt like were ready for their breakout which this wasn't necessarily a breakout game, but they were ready for uh, going to Winco. All right, you have fun. I'll see you soon. Um, Falcons, I felt like were ready to win some games, man, and they did. Um, and then also talked about how the Colts were able to run away from the Steelers. Literally, they were running the ball all over them until Jonathan Taylor's ankle injury um, and Anthony Richardson was out, but they were able to squeeze out of a win versus the Steelers. Um, things just didn't really fall the way for the Steelers. That is, it is what it is, right? That those type of things kind of happen. So, all right, let's get this thing going back up. All right. So, next up, we had the Bears versus the Rams. So, uh. Bears, Rams. I picked the Bears in this one because the Rams are just so injured. I, 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 I think Matt Stafford's awesome, and and he's making Tutu Atwell look really good. He's a top 10 wide receiver right now in EPA per play, according to PFF. So he's made Tutu Atwell a very efficient wide receiver. Um, he's been, I think he was like top 30 in wide receiver points this week. So Tutu Atwell, Matt Stafford. They looked nice. Tutu Atwell didn't even have a touchdown. Kyron Williams still looks nice. But the offensive line was very banged up, and the secondary was very banged up. Um, and that helped elevate this Bears team that was looking for a much-needed victory. I do want to talk about Caleb Williams a little bit in this. Um, he is not putting up a crazy stat line like Jaden Daniels is. His completion percentage isn't amazing. And that's kind of because the accuracy has been an issue. What I thought was going to be a problem with Jaden Daniels has been the problem with Caleb Williams, where he hasn't been super accurate, and he has not been able to hit stuff over the middle of the field entirely well. However, when things are going, which you saw when things are going well, which you saw in this one on a drive with Caleb Williams, where him and DeAndre Swift were playing great on this drive, and DJ Moore, and then he was able to hit DJ Moore in the back of an end zone, with a crazy arm angle touchdown that looked really nice. So Caleb Williams definitely still has all the potential in the world. He still looks really good. Um, and I think he has it, man. He's he's a really good quarterback. Um, I think he kind of showed it in this one. I'm waiting for him to have another crazy stat line. Uh, he lit it up against the Colts, and he came back in this one with a win. And I think they should keep it rolling. DeAndre Swift was able to run the ball in this, so... If they're able to keep running, if they're able to run the ball, I think they should be fine, right? Um, like other teams, the Commanders have been able to run the ball, and the Bears have not. Maybe that's part of the reason why Jaden Daniels has looked great, but I will, I do want to talk about that later. So, um, let's get into the Vikings-Packers. So, Vikings versus Packers. Uh, Vikings... Stormed out with a 28-point lead in this one. Sam Darnold is looking like the MVP. He's the MVP front run, front runner right now. Um, but the real real MVP has been Brian Flores, right? That defense has been awesome. They've been number one in DVOA and EPA, and their blitz rate is awesome. They, they're they're blitzing and they're not blitzing. They're 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 dropping you know eight in coverage and and then sometimes they're blitzing you know six or seven. 
and they they're they're just mixing everything up and it's very confusing however it seemed like in the second half the green bay packers were finally able to adjust they were able to kind of get some things rolling and they i felt like started to put some things together so that's something you want to look forward again with the vikings who are matched up against the jets next week and then the packers whoever they're playing next week i'm not sure but I feel like Jordan Love's getting things going again. He was rushed into this early. It just seemed like, you know, with Jordan Love getting rushed into it and Jair Alexander not playing, um, it kind of just seemed like it was going to be out of the Packers' reach. However, they only lost by two. So it was a close game. It was a really good game. Um, Vikings are legit, but so are the Packers. Don't count on the Packers, but the Vikings are amazing. So um, this was a really fun game to watch, although... I think the next time they match up, I think the Packers have it. Um, so next up, we'll talk about the, the Broncos-Jets pick. I picked the Jets because uh, their defense is stellar, and their offense should be way better than the Broncos. Bo Nix was horrible in this one. He was not good. He had negative seven yards at half, man. He can't hit anything downfield really consistently. The accuracy isn't all the way there yet. Uh, I feel like he has some problems with footwork in the pocket. Um, however, their defense is legit, man. That defense is really nice. PS2 is awesome, and the pass rush has been pretty good, right? So, um, I don't know what really happened. I didn't really watch this game too much, but I know Aaron Rodgers didn't throw a touchdown, and my running back got two points or whatever. So, Brees Hall was super ineffective, inefficient on this one. Uh, Braylon Allen got the goal line touches in this one. And uh, outside of that, they should have won this game. They missed like a 40-yarder, right? So don't be too scared if you're a Jets fan. But Broncos fans, the defense looks nice. Uh, maybe build around Bo Nix next year. See if he's got it next year. And if he doesn't, then you'll be packing up again the next year, probably for a quarterback. Um, I don't think Bo Nix is going to be that great. I think Bo Nix is a bust. I'm, I'm sorry, Bo Nix. I'm going to lay it out now. I got to... I got to sell out all my stock now, right? Um, did he, f he finish with, what, 56 yards, dude? Come on, man. Um, all right. Next up. The Buccaneers killed the Eagles in this one. They came out with, like, a 28-point lead as well. The Eagles' offense could not get anything going, dude. Um, and I wouldn't be too scared if you're an Eagles fan. You're playing in the NFC East, which isn't the best conference or division ever, right? And then on top of that, you were out without A.J. Brown. You're without Devonta Smith, and you just couldn't get anything really going without him. It just makes sense. I get it. It is what it is, however. But that that didn't matter on defense, man, because Tampa Bay Buccaneers' offense looked amazing. They they looked great. Chris Godwin was open all over the place. Uh, Trey Palmer looked really good in this one. Bucky Irving looked awesome. Bucky Irving is taking the starting job this week, by the way. Uh, next, week five is his breakout week. My nose is so itchy, dude. Week week five is the breakout week, guys. Buy all Bucky Irving stock. He is so much more efficient. I think. Rashad White is at like two yards a carry, and Bucky's at like six, dude. Come on. Bucky Irving needs to get like all the carries, and they're going to be rolling. That team's going to be rolling. All right? Buck season, baby. Anyway, next up, we had the Bengals-Panthers. I thought this was going to be a little bit more of a shootout than it was going to be, right? Um. However, the Bengals got their first win. They beat They beat the Panthers. Andy Dalton threw a couple picks, and that was just enough for the Bengals to actually squeeze by, only win by 10. This was down to the wire, though. Like, this was a tied game going into the fourth, I think, or like a touchdown lead. This was close. It was in reach of the Panthers. However, it felt like the Bengals just had the edge the whole game, and that's just kind of how it was. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. They, they got all the necessary stops they needed. And they were able to beat the Panthers. Um, Panthers' defense is still horrific. And the Bengals were able to get it done against the Panthers with their offense. Um, however, the pass rush still did not look great in this one. So that is definitely a huge concern. 
Really can't stop the run. Chuba Hubbard went off in this one. I think he had another 100-yard game. Um, that 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 D-line is terrible. I'm pretty sure Sam Hubbard's out. So, um, They just got Trey Hendrickson, man, and he can't win by himself. So, Next up, Texans-Jaguars. We had a little division matchup nightmare. It's a rivalry game. It was a close one. That didn't matter, though, right? Texans were able to sneak out with this one. You know, you had uh, you got Doug Peterson's job on the line. I'm surprised he still has a job, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, how is this guy not fired? They're on a nine-game losing streak now. If it gets to ten, man, there's no way you can keep him. I think the play calling is not super good, but I will say there is an execution problem. Doug Peterson, when I went to, to re-watch this game on film, Trevor Lawrence isn't looking like himself. He's not super accurate. The pocket presence isn't awesome. And all the things that he's built to be just really aren't there. He missed Brian Thomas Jr. for a wide open touchdown. He missed Christian Kirk a couple times. The run game isn't super good. The run blocking isn't super good. And the defense played all right. But it, I can't say you can totally blame Doug Peterson, but I don't think the play calling is making it any easier on Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think next year, though, is probably like, dude, you give Trevor Lawrence this big contract, but next year, man, if it's looking like this again, it's looking a little rough, dude. Um, even with a coaching change. I don't know. Texans are awesome, though. Texans are probably going to win this division, I think. It, it looks like they might run away with it if Anthony Richardson's out. I don't know if he's playing next week. They said it wasn't super serious. But if the Colts are playing how they are, how they have been, yeah, I know they just beat the undefeated Steelers, whatever. It was the Steelers, and I thought they were going to win that one pretty easily anyway. Um, Texans probably got it locked up, and they kind of look like the one seed favorite in my book. I mean, man, they just have, they didn't even have Joe Mixon and Diggs in the, or not Diggs, Tank Dell. They didn't have Tank Dell and Joe Mixon, man. And they're just picking apart every team. Yeah, they had a couple turnovers, but like, whatever, man. They're just playing so out of their minds on offense. The play calling is good. CJ Stroud is amazing. Nico Collins is looking like the best wide receiver in the league, and the Jags couldn't stop him. Yes, I know it was only a 24-point game, but they, they were great in this one. So, um, Next up, I don't really want to talk about this one too much. I'll talk about Drake May and Jacoby Brissett. I think Drake May gets the start this week. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I think this is the week that Drake May gets the start this upcoming week. They're playing the Dolphins. Um, and I think this has got to be a team that Devontae Adams might want to get traded to, which we'll talk about the Raiders later, but... Come on, man. I feel like you got all this cap space. You got the quarterback that you want. The offensive line is horrific, so if you buy you buy your wide receiver, get some draft. Well, I guess you'd be sending draft capital. Get your wide receiver, draft an O-line in the draft, and you'll look awesome, man. You'll be a playoff team next year with Devontae, Baker, Polk, Demario Douglas, the O-line, and the defense. I mean... Christian Gonzalez is looking super elite. He's looking like a top 10 cornerback. Christian Barmore, the D-line. Uh, Keon White is so spectacular this year. The secondary is awesome. This defense is legit. I know San Francisco just put up 30 on them, but they're not generating any offense. The offensive line is terrible, and that does play into effect. I don't know exactly what the DVOA and EPA numbers were in this one, but... Um, Brock Purdy is also looking amazing, so I'll talk about that. Brock Purdy's looking like a top 10 quarterback, even without, you know, CMC and and Kittle was banged up and Debo was banged up. They did play in this one, and Ayuk is not looking great, but they put up 30 on a really good defense. So 49ers are to, to be feared still, and they got lucked out with a Seahawks loss. So they're getting right back in there in that NFC West, you know, competition. So... Start Drake May. 
Next up, Commanders Cardinals. This is a good one because I want to talk about Jaden Daniels. Um, I picked this one because I felt like the defenses were terrible and the Cardinals offense was better, by the way. Didn't matter. The Cardinals offense looked fine. Um, they they like were like one in five on fourth down conversions. So like if you convert those and then maybe score on those drives, it's probably a pretty close game. But the commanders just controlled the whole clock. Jerry Mimic Nichols, my Boise State guy, dude. He had two touchdowns, 90 yards, and he's a great in pass pro. Jeremy McNichols is a dog, dude. And I, th I think Eckler was out on this one. What Did he play? I don't think so. Brian, Th Brian Robinson Jr. looked awesome. And the wide receivers are looking awesome with Zacchaeus and Diami Brown and, and McCaffrey and obviously McLaurin. But outside of that, Jaden Daniels is playing great. He is the offense. I think the pocket presence isn't, isn't there yet. You know, he can take some sacks. And the blitz rate and, and pressure rate or whatever isn't amazing. How he's dealing with these situations, the completion rate while being pressured. However, he's going to break, he is on pace to break the completion percent record. Record. He is great. Not only can he hit throws outside of the numbers, deep on far hashes, whatever. He's able to hit all the easy stuff. He's able to hit all the hard stuff over the middle of the field. He's throwing the ball over the middle of the field. With great timing, great poise, great accuracy, and anticipation. Can't say that word. I can never say it. Whatever. He's playing great. I don't know if this will keep up. He plays, you know, the Browns and the Ravens the next two weeks. So that'll be definitely tough. We'll see how he deals with Miles Garrett and the, the Ravens defense after that. So you got the Browns front seven and the Ravens front seven who just destroyed the Bills. It'll be great to watch. I think these are the two upcoming weeks that will really make or break Jaden Daniels. I'd love to see it. I want to see how he plays in those two matchups. But he's playing out of his mind, man. Like, better than C.J. Stroud was last year. Um, I like Drake May and Caleb over him. And that was because I think they have a lot higher of a ceiling. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry for punching you guys. He, They have a lot higher ceiling, I think. They're younger and they have crazy arm talent, and they can run the ball. But Jaden Daniels, straight out of college being 24, has such a high floor, and he is playing so great right away. And that you you love to see, right? So I, I can't wait for these next weeks to see um, what he can do. Next up, picked the Browns to beat the Raiders. Actually, in my preview, I did pick the Raiders. Um, and that's because I thought their pass rush would just kill Deshaun Watson, which did. I changed my answers when I was in Baltimore. Um, and that's because Devontae Adams was ruled out. He's requested a trade. And Max Crosby was ruled out, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I saw these two things, and I was like, there's no way the Raiders are going to win. They pulled it out anyway. I want to say it is not all Watson's fault, man. Watson looked really good in this game. If, I, if I'm going to be completely honest, he looked great. The offensive line is not very great. The wide receivers are not very great. However, he can take a lot of sacks. He is on pace to break the NFL record for, this, for most sacks ever. Um, and I thought I was going to be calling for Winston to start after this week, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's Watson as much as it actually is billed to be. And that's kind of my take on it. And the Raiders are still a feisty team, even without Adams, even without... You know Max Crosby. So maybe they can trade away Devontae Adams and get another wide receiver. I don't exactly know. I don't know what you're going to be able to get for Devontae Adams. He's old on a huge contract, but he is also a top five wide receiver. So I also don't know what you want. So we'll see who, who he goes to. Is it going to be Kansas City? Is it going to be Baltimore? Is it going to be New York? Is it going to be the Bills? Is it going to be the Browns? Is it going to be New England, like I said? I don't know, man. Is it going to be the Commanders? Holy shit, dude. Imagine if he went to the Commanders, who do have the money, by the way. They do have the draft capital, by the way. I mean, maybe that's something you want to pull the trigger on, man. That'd be crazy. Next up, I picked the Chiefs to beat the Chargers. I didn't know if Herbert was going to be playing in this one. That was kind of why I picked it. 
Chargers had it late. They didn't get the fourth down conversion on like the five yard line to get the score. Chiefs drove down the field. They scored and they won the game. Rasheed Rice is out for the season, torn ACL. Um, Chiefs are the best team in the league, and they're looking like the team that's going to win the Super Bowl. Chargers are also a great team, though. They're a feisty team, so don't take this as a bad loss, but maybe that Dobbins Lynn Sanity run is over. We'll see. Chiefs win this one. Not much to say they're the best team in the league. But the game that I went to, guys, I was at this game, so I actually don't know exactly what happened in it, right? Um, from what I can tell was Zach Orr and the defense had a master class game. Josh Allen couldn't do anything. He still had like 200 total yards. But wide receivers weren't getting separation. James Cook couldn't get anything in the run game going. The play calling was a little fucking horrible. It was honestly horrible. The Bills play calling was not very good. But the, the on the contrary, the, the Ravens defensive play calling was amazing. Um, and after the fumble... It was kind of just game over. It was 10 to 17, right? 10 to 21. And it looked like the Bills were going to drive down and score a touchdown. Um, and then they have some crazy, awful, terrible play call that's then fumbled by Josh Allen. And then the Ravens go down and score. And it was kind of just, it was kind of just over from there. And the Bills couldn't get anything over, over going because the Ravens knew they were going to be passing the ball. Um, but I do want to talk about the Ravens and their offense. By the way, chat, I called the touchdown. I'm sitting in the stands, and what was it? It was like some wham power play to the right where they pulled the tight end to the left, but they they, they had the box stacked up on the right. They were in the Tampa 2 high look deal going on with the Bills. I'm like, why are they in too high on first down, and they're about to run power. They have 22 personnel out here, and they were in too high. I'm like, yo, dude, 80 yards to the right. This is a touchdown. Boom, he's gone. Boom. Derek Henry's gone. Um, that is a crazy mismatch, and they finally found the way to do it, man. They finally are putting all the pieces together. Derek Henry's looking awesome. Yep, dirt. You fired up, I'm fired up. We were fired up in this matchup, man. That was a great game to go to. It was a great atmosphere. Lamar and Derek Henry looked great. I'd like to see the pass game be a lot better for the Ravens, though. And that's something you're, you're going to try to want to exploit. I think you just got to stay in one high versus the Ravens, man. And, and then see if Lamar's going to beat you in the pass. I know he can do it, but he needs to prove it. Yeah, 199 rushing yards, 205 total. Justice Hill's looking great outside of the backfield. I can't wait for Keaton Mitchell to be back in this offense. That's going to be explosive. Um, but Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, the pass game is just not getting going, man. There's nothing in the pass game, but it didn't really matter, right? But they were just sitting in too high the whole game, man. Get it, get in one high safety, stack the box, get seven guys in the box, eight guys in the box, man. Eight guys in the box. Like, come on. Don't let them run all over you. Um, I did not watch this Dolphins-Titans game at all, but from what I know is the Titans ran all over the Dolphins in this one. And the Dolphins couldn't stop the run. And they they couldn't they, they just don't have Tua, man. They can't really get anything going with their quarterback situation, which is understandable. So, Will Levis had another meme. That's all that matters. Next up, Seahawks-Lions. I want to talk about this one. I'm very excited about this one. Um... Because I think the Seahawks are legit. And I hope that people don't think otherwise because of, like, kind of certain things that happened in this one, like Witherspoon getting ran over and Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery running all over the place. Like, don't stat don't stat watch this one, man. You can't, you can't really just look at the box score and be like, holy shit, Jared Goff, you had a receiving touchdown and you didn't throw an incompletion. Jared Goff had, like, 80% of his yards after the after the catch, by the way. Like, over 80%. Probably over 85%. At half, it was like 50 yards were before the catch, and 100, it was... No, no, no. So at half, what did he have? I don't remember. I think he finished with like 220 yards, but 50 of them were before the catch, is what my guess is. I'm not completely sure. 
However, he was very on time, and he was so accurate in this one, which was awesome to see from Jared Goff. But I know there was injuries for the Lions. They were without their all-pro center, and they were without Brian Branch. But the Seahawks were without their entire interior defensive line. They were without their th- their three edge rushers. Well, they were without Nwosu and Mafe. And without Nwosu, like they traded Darrell Taylor away, and then the next day Nwosu got hurt. So it's like they're down an edge rusher pretty much already. Which, Derek Hall's been playing nice. But they're without both their edge rushers. They're without their starting Mike Linebacker who's been playing pretty good football. And then you're without your interior, your entire defensive line, man. And they were just able, they were just exploited that entirely. It, And because of it, the Seahawks just felt like they were playing behind in this one the entire time. I mean, Geno Smith threw the ball for like over 50 times, which by the way, he's leading the league in passing yards. I think this offense though, for the, the Seahawks and the Lions, they both look amazing. The play calling in this game was so good, I think, from both sides of the ball. Um, I don't want to blame the refs in this one for the Seahawks. There was already so many calls going against the Lions. There was a lot of holding, though, on the Seahawks. But there was a DPI that wasn't called and that two-point conversion that wasn't called for the Seahawks. So that was really huge. That was like nine points that was like off the board. But I don't think they had enough to win this one because of the defensive line issues, right? However... Ryan Grubb looks like the best play caller in the, like, I think his only problem right now is not enough play action being called. However, outside of that, it's so creative. Like, the things they're doing, man. You have a tight end out wide, and then you're motioning him all the way over to slide your line to the right to let this free rusher go for him to blow up this other guy. And then you got other stuff going on to get your wide receivers open, right? So outside of this, you know, you're you're getting your tight end to block all these free rushers that's getting motioned over. So then you just have perfect pass pro, which you need it, by the way, because they're also on their third string right tackle and their second string right guard, who is Anthony Bradford's horrible. But um, I think the play calling looks amazing. Ryan Grubb is a great offensive coordinator, and I think he's already top five in play calling. Ben Johnson, however, is the best play caller, I think. He is amazing, and he did look great in this one. And the Lions looked amazing, and that's why you saw Jared Goff go like 18 for 18 for 220 yards and a a touchdown and the receiving touchdown, which was an awesome play call. It just was so Lions-esque in this one, man. And they're such a fun team to watch. The Lions are a fun team to root for. Um, And the Seahawks just didn't have enough juice to beat them in this one, and that's why they lost. So... Um, we'll go over the picks. I, I'm i doing a lot better now. I'm at 80%. I'm a top 210,000 picker, I guess. Um, next week, we got week five. We got a lot less picks in this one, so it'll be a shorter episode in that one. So maybe I'll, talk, I'll, I'll, I'll start talking about college football now, probably, in a lot of my episodes. I'll talk about how awesome Ashton Genty is in Boise State, how awesome... How awesome that is. How awesome the Heisman candidacy is. Travis Hunter is so awesome. And Ashton Genty is so awesome. But we'll talk about that probably tomorrow, right? So this is going to go up on the YouTube, I think, tonight. If not tomorrow, man. I don't really want to do it tomorrow. But I might just do it tomorrow. Ugh. We'll see, man. But um, I'll be live tomorrow. Maybe the next day. Maybe the next day after that. Maybe the next day after that. Probably not, though. Um, We're going to be going to the new schedule. It's a scuff schedule this week just because I flew in from Baltimore. But um, I'm going to be streaming hopefully Sunday. I want to stream Sunday nights. And then upload my video Monday morning. Stream Tuesday, Tuesday night. Right? Upload Wednesday morning. Or afternoon, I guess Wednesday, Wednesday night, and then stream also Wednesday night. Stream. I want to stream. I I won't stream on Tuesdays. I probably won't stream on like Sundays, right? Tuesday, Sunday. Oh wait. Sorry. Monday, Monday, su- Sunday, Monday. I won't. Oh wait, no, because I want to stream Sunday night. What am I saying? I don't know. We'll figure out the schedule. Um, but recaps 
Sunday night. Preview, Tuesday night. So I won't be streaming Mondays. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning into this one. Um, as always, I'm live on Twitch a lot of the time. Not this last week, just because of my trip. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, do everything. But also, go to the link below. Um, follow me on Twitch. Watch my Twitch streams. I want to get some more football, college football gameplay going on there. So, thank you guys for watching and have a great night.